This video was brought to you by our patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to join them in helping make more videos like these happen, check out the link in the description. So currently in my real job, I'm teaching an abstract algebra class. And I just ran across this really nice example of something called a group that I hadn't seen before. So I thought I'd make a video about it. If you'd like to learn about abstract algebra in depth, I have a full course being built or already built, depending on when this video comes out, that is ad-free on my second channel, with his, which is called Math Major. And you might ask, how is this ad-free? And for that, I'd like to thank the patrons. And if you'd like to support the channel, maybe consider joining the patron. It helps us not only increase the quality of the videos here, but it keeps all of those course videos, those educational videos on Math Major, free. Okay, so let's quickly recall the definition of a group and look at a very standard example. So a group is a set G together with an operation star satisfying four axioms. The first axiom is called closure, and that says if you have any A and B in G, then A star B is an element of G. So you can combine two elements from the group and you do not get outside of the group. Then the second one is called an identity axiom, and that says we've got this very special element E inside of the group, so that when you combine it with any element on either side, nothing changes. So think about adding by zero or multiplying by one. Those are like identity type operations. Then next we have inverses. That's like a path back to the identity. So that says for all elements of the group, there is something called A inverse inside the group so that when you combine A with A inverse in either order, you get back to the identity. So just like adding three and negative three or multiplying two times one half. And then finally, there's an associativity axiom. And that says if you have three elements of the group A, B, C, if you do A star, B star C, that's the same thing as A star B star C. Okay, so a pretty classic example that's given in one of these abstract algebra classes is a group of matrices. And that's because generally students have seen elementary linear algebra before taking one of these classes that involves learning about groups. And so let's recall that GL2R is the group of all two by two invertible matrices. But also a matrix being invertible is the same thing as its determinant being non-zero. So that's what we'll put here. Recall that AD minus BC is the determinant of this matrix right here. So let's quickly check that this satisfies all of the axioms. So let's maybe set A equal to ABCD, and we'll set B equal to um, XYZW. I think maybe that's a good way to build those two things. And let's calculate the determinant of A times B. Also, let's maybe assume that these two things are inside of our group. So that means their determinant is non-zero. Okay, so using rules for matrix multiplication, we'll have the following matrix as a result of A times B. We'll have AX plus BZ in this upper bit. We'll have AY plus B. W up there, we'll have CX plus DZ here, and then finally CY plus DW there. But now taking the determinant says you multiply the diagonal elements and the off diagonal elements, and then you do that subtraction. So that's going to give us AX plus BZ times CY plus DW minus ay plus bw times cx plus dz. And I'm not gonna go through all of the crazy details, but it turns out that you can expand this and then factor it as ad minus bc times xw minus yz, which is exactly the determinant of a times the determinant of b, which is non-zero because we assume that a and b were inside of there. Okay, so that means if we start with two matrices inside of this set, we multiply them, we're still inside of this set. So we're good to go. 
Okay, so that is the closure axiom. Now for the identity axiom, we don't have to try too hard because the identity matrix is super well known. That is the matrix uh, 1001. And now for inverses, we also don't have to try too hard because there's like a standard formula for taking the inverse of a two by two. I won't check this, but maybe it would be a nice little exercise to check this. And this is equal to one over AD minus BC, scalar multiplied into the matrix where we swap the diagonals and negate the off diagonal. So that's our inverse matrix. And then checking associativity is either a slog or pretty quick if you know the right trick. And we won't do that here. Okay, but this is a standard example. What I really want to look at is something that I'll call a non-standard example of a matrix group. So let's do that. Okay, so now we're going to look at this non-standard example, and this comes from the Abstract Algebra book by Galleon. It's a really good book. Okay, so let's dive into it. So we'll call it G, and it's the set of two by two matrices where every entry is equal, but it cannot be zero. So some elements of this are like one, 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 maybe negative seven, negative seven, negative seven, negative seven, and so on and so forth. So those are obvious elements of this. All that is required is that all four elements are the same. And what's our operation? Our operation will be matrix multiplication again, which seems totally crazy because notice the determinant of this matrix is zero, which means in the traditional sense, it is not invertible. And in fact, the identity matrix is not in this set. That's important to point out. So one, zero, zero, one is not an element of this set. So even though we're taking matrix multiplication to be our operation here, you know, nothing is standard about this setup. We will not get the standard um, identity element. We won't get standard inverses either. Okay, that being said, everything can be sort of figured out or guessed by the following observation, which essentially says what it looks like to combine elements from this set. So let's take two elements of this set and multiply them and see what we get. So we have A, 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 and B, 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 B. So using the standard rules for matrix multiplication, what will we have for this upper entry? So let's recall we take the first row, swivel it into the first column. That'll be AB plus AB, which is 2AB. Then we continue to do that, and we'll notice that we get 2AB everywhere. So we have 2AB here, 2AB here, 2AB here, but that's clearly inside of the group. But it being inside of the group tells us that the group is closed. It also gives us an idea for guessing what the identity is as well. So let's look at this. If we wanted this object to be equal to A, what would B have to be? That is, if we want 2AB to be equal to A in all of these entries, then B, it seems like, would have to be one half. And that's the identity here, is the matrix with all entries of one half. And we can check that just by multiplying it into any matrix, and we'll see that we get half A plus half A, which is A, and that's occurring in all of the entries. So that is, in fact, the identity element. And then you might see, say, what do we need for inverses? And we can do the same game to figure out what the inverse should be. So let's say this would need to be equal to one half for these to be inverses of each other. And that's because, recall the identity matrix. You know, I use the word identity matrix loosely here because it's like our non-standard identity matrix has a one half in every entry. But if you do the quick calculation where you have 2AB equals 1 half, what you'll see is that B is equal to 1 over 4A. So that's exactly what we get for our inverse rule. So we could write this down as AAAA inverse, really loosely thinking that that's in our setting, not the standard setting is equal to 1 over 4a, 1 over 4a, 1 over 4a, 1 over 4a. And then you can check that if you multiply those two matrices, you get exactly what you need.
And that's because in each entry, you'll essentially have one quarter plus one quarter. Okay, so now let's like quickly look at what's happening in the bigger world. So in the bigger world, I think you could take n by n matrices with all entries that are equal. So that would be my matrix A. And then my matrix B would have all of these entries being equal to lowercase b. But if we add those together, notice we'll get n times a, b, because we have a, b added to itself n times in all of the entries. So n, a, b, all the way down, n, a, b, and then n, a, b. So those are all of the entries for that product. But that gives us an idea of what the identity should be in this case. And again, it's like loosely the identity. It's the identity in this setup, not the setup of standard matrix multiplication. So the identity would be the matrix with one over N in all of the entries. And then what would inverses be? Well, I think you can quickly check that the inverse of the matrix with all A's would be equal to the matrix with every term being one over N squared times A. So that's what you need in this case to make everything work. So one over N squared times A in every entry. Okay, so cool. Like I said, I think this is a really nice example. I think maybe it doesn't have any like actual real applications. That being said, I think it is very illustrative for coming up with examples of groups that you might not normally see and being able to check that they are groups axiomatically. And that really opens up a question that I have for everyone out there. Do, does anyone else know any groups that are kind of like this? In that, by their definition as sets, they don't seem like they should be groups, but they turn out to be by taking non-standard copies of identities and inverses. So post in the comments if you know anything like that. And also, while I still have you, if you're interested in helping out the channel and help, and also while I still have you, if you're interested in joining the Patreon, remember it helps keep everything ad-free on the second channel. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.